Howdy fellas, Pinky Day here. Okay guys, uh, for this uh, gloom and doom, gray, chilly, freezing, icy, snowy, cold Sunday, this is going to be Devil Feature Day. First video we're going to have is going to be the, the Trumpeter 148 scale Vickers Wellington, Old Wimpy. And the second video is going to be an update of my C45 provider. My ICM models. Uh, this video, the first video, the Wellington is supposed to have been for this Monday, and the USS Ward is supposed to be for today. But guys, I, I just couldn't keep my hands off this kit. So I, I tacked it as much as I could on it, and I got all the interior parts all completed and all painted and weathered out, and gave it a coat of Krylon Clear to protect the paint and keep it. Uh, Keep it from uh, fading and within time. And uh, next on it, we'll be buttoning up the fuselage. So on this video, I like to go ahead and keep the, leave the fuselage and the sub assemblies of the interior parts in their entirety before buttoning up the fuselage. Because we'll be able to see all the detail that was done inside the kit. So this this model does give you a lot of detail. I, I love the geosynthetic uh, design on the fuselage that Mr. Uh, Mr. Barnes Wallace, Dr. Barnes Wallace, excuse me, dear sir. Mr. Darn, Mr. Barnes uh, Wallace's uh, design of Vickers Aircraft Company. Uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Barnes Wallace was a a great a great asset to the war effort. He uh, proved the bouncing bomb could be done; it could be used exactly what he designed it for. And uh, Squadron 617, commanded by Guy Penrose Gibson of the 617 Squadron, the Dam Busters, uh, proved his work very successful, and it was. It was useful at the time, but it was never repeated after that raid was done. And uh, also, he invented the Tall Boy earthquake bomb dropped by Lancaster. And I believe that was the, uh, the demise of the Tirpitz. And I uh, designed the R01 dirigible airship. And uh, also he designed a few other aircraft for Vickers. Also the, the beautiful Whippy, the Wellington bomber, which its weight was worth in gold. And uh, the Wellington came out, the first flight of the Wellingtons came out back in late of 1938. And they're used until the war's end. And these aircraft were had geostatic uh, design fuselage also on the wings. The whole aircraft was they used Lajeraz, Lajeraz as stringers and tubing stringers, and use aluminum on them. They went ahead and covered with fabric. So uh, you got to be very careful when you walk on these things. So actually, the interior parts there's a catwalk on it where you can walk. Without uh, interfering, the going through the skin of the uh, of the aircraft, and like I say, it don't take much to puncture uh, fabric and all that wonderful work that was done. And uh, you got a lot of the great ladies back in World War II who worked to work for Vickers that that were sewing that that made the that did all the canvas work for the Wellington bombers. That was a lot of precise sewing. Now, guys, this was done with. Many with a needle and thread. They were very skilled. There's no skill. They had to have eight stitches to an inch. And if it wasn't eight stitches to an inch, do it over again. Because it was very important that the stitches were very close. Because, like I say, you got fabric on an aircraft and the airplane's going about three, almost 300 miles an hour. You got a lot of that wind builds up and catches that air pocket, that darn canvas, it could, t it could tear off that skin. And uh, in your world of hurt, you're going to crash and burn. So it was a beautiful design aircraft, and this is a beautiful design kit. Uh, that's chatter. We're gonna come over and take the camera over here, and uh, I'll go ahead and um, discuss what I did on this kit, and uh, discuss what I'll be doing on it after this video is over, before this video is over with, and close out the video. Prepare for the video number two. Okay, guys, here we go. This is the right side of the fuselage, fellas. 
I went ahead and primed the whole inside of the fuselage first. When it dried, I went ahead and airbrushed flat black. Flat black mixed with silver. Give it a metal, uh, like a burnt metal, like a, like a metal color. Almost like a, a gun blue color. And with a tint of blue with it too. And I airbrushed the, the whole aircraft. When it dried, I went ahead and made a wash using uh, a water based paint on top of enamel. I made sure the surfaces were glossed first. And I went ahead and um, applied my wash of white all throughout the, the aircraft. And when it dried, I came back and kind of picked off the, the geosynthetic uh, framework of the aircraft with uh, aluminum and uh, gave another another wash of uh, white over it again. And uh, of course, these are, the, these are the flares right here where they were. I think they were a flare. Uh, they were painted orange and they, and they, uh, they have their own colors. And the ammo boxes aft it's been picked out real good. This is the right side of the fuselage. On the right side of the fuselage here, the interior parts will fit. Right here, guys, is the uh, this is the cockpit sub assembly. And Bombay assembly. This received a prime, a coat of primer. On this primer, again like the fuselage, I went ahead, airbrushed my special black metal paint when it dried. Then I gave it a coat of whitewash over it. Then I picked it out again with aluminum paint. We're going to look closer to the cockpit, guys. Yeah, it's close enough. You can see how the seats are. And the console here. With the dial facings right there. Boy, it's kind of hard to get a focus on this thing, fellas, with this little small monitor got this here camera I like I'll back off a little more I can give a little more control of it there we go you can see the detailed radio the radio department and here's your dial facing right here got your seat pilot seat right there it was uh, all painted all black airbrushed uh, with black they picked out with uh, airbrushed with also give a white uh, a white wash and picked out more aluminum now the kit to give you a crazy way of doing it though but I don't see how it works uh, they gave you a decal they gave you a film like a camera film like a ne it's like a negative film it's supposed to be the instrument panel itself and which it is you take this instrument panel and you glue the instrument panel to the ejected plastic part that fits the, 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 the dial facing. It's like a sandwich. Then you get your clear part fits over between the dial facing and also your the back of your plastic here. Get your plastic, put your film on there, then you got your plastic dial facing of its cross here. And I did that, it didn't look right. So I did some screw it. So I got rid of the decal, painted all white from the air, all white, I'm all white on the uh, plastic uh, uh, dial face panel here. And I went ahead and uh, airbrushed the black on the instrument clear instrument panel they gave you. And I glued it in because they had holes in it already, which supposed to reveal the decal film. So what I did, it did. It it uh, it brought in. You can see these little the, the, the small dials on there. It peered through the uh, 
the, the plastic part itself. So like I say guys, this is uh, it's going together good, pretty good. And we got the uh, port side of the fuselage. You can see the tire well on the after the back and the, also you got your, uh, your, your ammunition lockers which fits after the uh, tailgate Charlie. And that uh, track goes down there. It's supposed to be ammunition feed. It goes to your, goes to the, to the guns aft. And, and you can see that uh, port side of the fuselage was treated as, precisely as the starboard. And uh, lastly, fellas, we're gonna go ahead. And I got the two turrets already done already, and uh, all it needs to put the transparency on it. So that's the end of the. Uh, that'll be done when the model is finished. And then we'll go ahead and. Uh, Mask those off and uh, airbrush the transparencies with the kit. Make it tired. You can see how the very detail. These parts, uh, each one of these turrets, fellas. Uh, get that turret out. Get that gun out of there. Uh, I would say there's uh, one, two, three, four. There's ten parts. There's ten parts makes up this. Makes up this here uh, gun turret. There's two. Two of them are, are precisely the same. As you can tell, and there's so there's 20 parts right here, guys. And uh, on the uh, fuselage here, this out of the way. This is a a bottom turret. As you can see right here. Now, in actuality, this is like a gondola. They must have got this design off of from. Uh, um, my God, what aircraft? Uh, we made the Halifax. What company was that? Uh, the same thing as the as the uh, the the, ha the, the, the Hayford bomber. The Hayford had this retractable gondola type bottom turret that retracted. So this is the retracted position. So in flight. Flight crew would enter the turret. He'd walk in, sit down, close the door, and lower himself down. And the turret would rotate 360 degrees to uh, fend off the, the the fending foe. And when he got done, the turret retracted, opened the door. He walked out, closed the door, and got back into his position before, and he's good to go. So that's how that turret works. Okay, guys, we're gonna swing the camera on yours truly here and uh, finish up the video and discuss what I'll be doing now. Okay, here I is, guys. Next video at this, I have to load it up. It'll be number seven on the uh, Beechcraft Super 18 C45 provided by ICM models. Uh, I shall have a, a video of that. Color that after this one, after it gets loaded up. Then when I get done, I'm going to button up the fuselage on this on Wimpy right here and let it dry 24 hours and I'm going to start working on the ward. And also, uh, highly likely, I think I'm, what I'll do, I think I'll work on the ward tomorrow. Start of a new week and I'll just go ahead and um, start working on my uh, fairy flycatcher by Lindbergh. And uh, so that's ready to be painted and everything. I'm just going to mount that wing on it and, and again uh, make my silver aluminum and airbrush sink. Make a video of that. So I'll probably have a video of that maybe, maybe tomorrow. Double feature. But anyway, I'll have one for the warden for tomorrow because I got I got the mast all done on it. All I got to do is work on top of the galley deck and get that all squared away. Then make a video of that. That way to fix stacks up, do a little decal, de detailing around there. And go ahead and work on the torpedo tubes. The torpedo tubes will take some time. And uh, so there's nothing but time. That's all I got. Okay, guys, this includes video number two on the Trumpeter 148 scale Vickers Wellington. If anybody's got one of these in the stash, it's a beautiful kit. You know what Frankie Day means and know what I'm saying. It's an excellent kit, and uh, there's a lot of aftermarket parts to this model you can add on to it. It's going to be another added expense to a $100 kit. And if you don't have the 148 scale Wellington bomber, be sure to get one. It's a nice kit, guys. It really is. 
There's a couple, I tell you, there's a company that started out with Banner made in the USS Arizona. It was the first kit they ever done, and they expanded the unlimited quality, quantity of kits that they produced over the years of the millennium. And uh, they got put in real nice kits, but they're pricey. It's getting nowadays, you can't buy a kit under 50 bucks. That's why I got a hell of a stash back here. And when I run into a, to a situation I can't be able to afford it no more, the stash I gotta keep me busy. Okay, guys, enough of this jazz right now. This is uh, Frank and Dave signing off, and uh, stay tuned for video number two tonight from a C uh, C45 provider by ICM Models. You'll want to miss that video. And uh, so I got uh, work to do after this vid. And uh, I wish everybody a very, very Merry Christmas, a safe Christmas, and a wonderful New Year. And God bless each and one of you guys out there. Thank you very much for your warm, wonderful comments. And my wife and I are very honored, each one of you out there. And uh, my dream come true for next year is like to meet everybody personally, you know. And, but you know how much you're going to get out of these on, vi on, on, on video. <laughs> but... but uh, like I say, this is a small world, guys, and no air either. And uh, so make Mama happy always. And uh, happy modeling. Please subscribe. And uh, God bless you guys again. It's Becky Day signing off. So stay tuned for video number two. That's coming up next. Bye, boys.